many times we ask the question, uh, what is really, what is a person? What's the connection of a person with the Kadosh Baruch Hu? What makes us different than the animals? There's a, a trends today that classify humans as a species of animals as well. And this is really not the, not the case. In order to understand what a person is, we need to understand how far, or realize how far we have traveled from the original uh, state of what a person is all about. We work in darkness. The Rambam writes about it. Other people, and sometimes we feel it, we are in darkness. We don't know. We are confused. We are drifted away. Well, question is really, who am I? We are an entity, it's a spiritual entity, that around it was built this apparatus, this body, that collects and changes and grows and develops all the time. When you were, when you, we were all just an embryo, we were microscopic. And then we, we grew up, and then we were born, and we were this big, and then we get bigger and bigger, and sometimes we eat too much, and we get way bigger, and so on and so forth, and, and we are we ever growing, until, of course, we reach a certain stage, and then we start to shrink. You know, according, if you look carefully, and we'll get to it maybe with Hashem some other time, according to Kohelet, death is not a stage you go living, dying, but rather death has five stages that starts to starts very early in your life. We get to it, Bezat Hashem, not today, but we get to it. Five stages of death. And you do that, you have to, and it's all done for us to realize really our place. Even the way the, the values that we put onto ourselves, or what defines us, is always adds on. You know, we we are exposed to society, to the media that shapes us in constant bombardment that changes our point of view. We know that certain things are wrong, but then the media bombard our brain and our conscience all the time, all the time, all the time, all the time, until we say to what is right is wrong and what is wrong is right. This is how far we have traveled. That's why most people are not what we call enlightened. What does it mean to be enlightened? To be enlightened is comes from the word what? Or oh, sounds like the light. In Hebrew we call it he'ara, to be mu'ar, to be, to have light. What light? What do you mean light? Well, am I in darkness? The answer is yes. So therefore, how do I become enlightened? An animal is not enlightened. Only humans become. The answer is go back to basic. Go back if you're able to sit down and you want to call it meditate or think. As simple as you can about yourself. The more you'll be able to shed from you Images that you have about yourself, which are false, because that's not really you. Thoughts that you have about yourself, about your life, the more you'll be able to shed them and reach to the core that shines the light on you, the more you'll be able to, as they say, see the light. I'll show you something. See this? This is your soul. And this is the way we are. You can't see any light until the light is there. But you don't see any light until you remove all the masks around it. Then you could see the light, you become enlightened. 
we need to go back to the stage of what, how do we call Shlomo Amela calls us Ben Enosh Kohelet calls us, everybody calls us Ben Enosh Ben Adam why do we call why humans are called Ben Adam, the son of Adam there is a great idea behind it you should strive to get to the core as you were the son of Adam Rishon that understood and saw and and basically it was simple I'm not saying primitive simple the strength is in simplicity it takes great thought to create harmony in simplicity it creates quiet in your soul when you come to a house that is cluttered and it's messy and there's dust and you can't you can't become spiritual the Rambam says Dirana, Ishana, Meyashvim Dato Shel Adam to have a nice place, a clean place not extraordinary, beautiful clean, organized but settle down your mind so in other words we need to go back to the simplicity, almost the simplicity in the Hasidut calls it the simplicity of a child to a child you'll ask him, do you believe in God? So, of course I do and you ask him, where is God? he'll tell you everywhere the kid feels it, not only knows it feels it we since we don't want to deal with it since we want to do what we want, we put God in a, in a drawer. And we say, we don't see it. We make excuses. Until to the point, we reach a point where, in a way, God does not exist in our world. And then, we lose, when we take God of the equation, we lose the title, Ben Adam, Enosh, human And we therefore are able to do atrocities, to kill, to murder, to rape, to steal, to rob. Whether in World War II with the Nazis, or in Rwanda, or in I don't know where. You take God out of the equation, you have no point of reference. You become worse than an animal. Animal will kill for its, for its needs to eat, to survive. Humans will kill for joy, for fun, for boredom. They have nothing else to do. They have, to, they have a surplus of men. Guess what we're going to do? We're going to go to a war. For greed. We say, we think that if a person, let's say, we give importance to people, for example, if they're good basketball players, football players, soccer players, that makes them important. The so celebrities. We need to keep, give importance to those among us who help us maintain the true character of a human being. And that is something that we have to remember. There are people who think that only chesed, only uh, acts of kindness comes to express human attributes by people. Uh, the truth of the matter is it's not. What defines uh, a person or humanity in people, as Shlomo HaMelech says, Ki ha'elokim bashamayim, because God is in heaven, ve'ata ba'aretz. It says in Kohelet. is knowing your place. And I'm, lately I've been very bothered with people who don't know their place. Because they usually create chaos. If somebody has a job, why do you want to take his job? Because you want to, 
Go get a job somewhere else. Why do you have to knock somebody out? You don't know your place. What's the problem with that? It's very simple. If you realize that the Kadosh Baruch Hu, the God, gave this man this position, therefore it was given to him from God. That's Bal Tachmod. When you go after his place, you don't believe in God. It's very simple. It doesn't make a difference if you're stealing, uh, shoplifting something, or you're trying to steal people from a shul to come to your shul, or people from your yeshiva to, to, to take people from, from other yeshiva, and so on and so forth. That's stealing. That's baltachmod. That's avera midoraita. Knowing knowing that God is in heaven and you are on the earth, is to also realize there's a big distance between men and Adam. Now here we have the concept of Ben Enosh, which is a creature that has the ability and the opportunity to actually communicate with God. That is a man to communicate with God. A person that does all the chesed in the world, he is a tzaddik, he does any all the account of chesed, still did not understand or grasp, not necessarily, he grasped the, the, uh, the connection between him and his creation. In other words, between him and an animal, there's not such a big difference. Because what defines us from the animal is knowing how to communicate and how to come closer and to know the distance. If I know the distance, I know how far do I have to go between man and God. An animal, for example, you ask me, so how is it possible? Because if you say an animal, a behemoth, a behemoth also enjoys the kindness when he eats grass. It's a chesed that Kadosh Baruch Hu gave it. So that is not necessarily the definition of a person. So what does it mean exactly to communicate with God? So, Rav Pinkus has a beautiful mashal on that, and he says the following. If a person sits in one side of the room, one end of the room, and his friend is sitting on the other end of the room, and between them there is a curtain, and when one is talking, the other one knows that his friend hears him. He knows it, because he's on the other side of the room, just behind the curtain. I cannot see him, but I can talk to him. And he also knows that his friends knows that he can hear him. Not only that you are talking, and I know you can hear me, he knows that you are listening as well. By doing so, knowing that my friend is there listening to me and knowing that my friend knows that I know that he can hear me, we create a connection. There is a Kesha. There is a connection already. This is how we start to communicate. This is one of the problems that we have in interpersonal relationships. We talk to the other person, not always interested that the other person will hear us. That's why we yell. And when you yell and you scream, you have a fight, the other person doesn't hear you. The words of wise men are heard when you speak to them. Come. When most of the problems between husband and wife start, most of the problems, not all, most of them, because lack of communications, they can't communicate well. When the husband talks and the wife seems like she's not listening, he will get annoyed. You're not paying attention. She says, I am, but it doesn't look like it. It's not that she is or she's not. It's, the problem is not in that. The problem is the perception that one is not listening. So many times the problem is with you, not with the person. They are listening. Why did you interpret that as they're not listening? And this is the 
issue of communicating with HaKadosh Baruch Hu. When a person communicates with his creator, he already, it's called talking. He talks to the Elohim. And he says, Rebbono Shalom, Hashem, Sefatai Tiftach, open my lips, Ufi Yagiti Ilatecha. That's the beginning of the communication. That's why it's important when we speak, when we do Shmona Yisrael, to start with Hashem Sefatai Tiftach. Because I am making a statement that I am talking to you. I'm not just saying, Baruch Ata. To whom? You're talking to me. But if I say to you, Moshe, listen, I want to tell you something. Now I know that you're listening to me. I created a channel of communication by addressing Moshe. But if I'm going like this and I'm saying, uh, so Nu, how was your school today? Everything was okay? And then I said, why aren't you listening to me? He said, you're talking to me. When I'm saying, Hashem, Sefatai Tiftach, I'm opening a channel of communication. And he says to him, he says, listen, and I know when I'm saying that, I know that HaKadosh Baruch Hu listens and hears me. And if you, and we all know that if you talk to HaKadosh Baruch Hu, there's no way that he does not hear you. He always hears what you say. And you said to him, listen, HaKadosh Baruch Hu, Avinu Malkeinu, Father, you talk to him. And HaKadosh Baruch Hu knows because you talk to him, which is interesting. HaKadosh Baruch Hu knows that you know that he listens to you. That's already communicating. And you know that now there is an established, that's why it's important to pray to HaKadosh Baruch Hu. And by doing so, pay attention, by communicating with HaKadosh Baruch Hu, then you become Adam. In other words, when you know that there is a God that listens to you, and therefore you know that He is God, and you man, in other words, when you know your place, when you know your place, you get from here a very interesting statement. When a person does not know his place, he loses the statue of a person. He is not entitled to be called a human anymore. If you have a cat and you're in the middle of a, of a or you have a Shih Tzu, and you're in the middle of an important discussion on, on, on the future of the world, whether you should press the red button or not, the cat doesn't care, or the shih tzu doesn't care. He will come in, barging in, rub a rain against your leg, will jump on your lap. I'm, it's important now, get out of here. The dog doesn't know its place. It doesn't know what's important and what's not important. A child knows when the father talks to the mother not to butt in. That's the beginning of a training of a creature to become a man. When does this happen? When will we call this appropriate age? It starts very young. But there are stages within say, six years old, three years old for this, six years old for that. And then the line becomes 13. And what do we do in 13? We do mitzvot. Why do we do mitzvot? Because we know that there is a God. And I know that there is a distance. And I know that I need to do this. Then you're a title of a person. But I'm going to tell you the following. When you communicate with HaKadosh Baruch Hu, when you're talking to Him, you reach the title of man, of human. But you haven't reached the title yet of a Jew. And what would acquire you to become a Jew is much greater than that. It would start, of course, with understanding why am I doing the mitzvot and so on and so forth. It is very important to understand how to communicate with HaKadosh Baruch Hu so you would know your place. And now you might understand why according to Kabbalah we refer to as the human soul is one. Why Am Israel is a Chad? Why Tfilah is so important? 
We look at fila as an obligation, as a burden. Oh my goodness, I have to daven again. I don't have time for this. I'm daven. I really have to go to work. You're right. So is an ox have to go to work. And an ox is exempt from praying. In order to maintain that, you need to come and pray. You need to talk to Akadosh Baruch Hu. That's what the Gemara Hasidim Rishonim, early sages, used to pray for three hours. An hour before preparation, an hour of prayer, and an hour to descend down after the great elevation. To pray for an hour, approximately, as I said to you many times before, it would require you to pronounce the word, every word, either on a length of seven seconds or to say the word and pause and contemplate on that. Not think, contemplate on that for seven seconds. If you take the whole Shmona and you play seven seconds per word, it will take you an hour to say Shmona But we are not interested in communicating. That's why the Kabbalah says, Knesset Yisrael, like Kadosh Baruch Hu, like a Chatan and the Kala, to un- tell us to understand that the way to communicate is not only limited to you and Akadosh Baruch Hu, it goes all, all throughout your life. And if you cannot communicate with God, you will have a problem communicating most likely with anyone, including yourself. According to the Kabbalah, for example, when a person, there's many ways to do so, but one way is when you close your eyes and you pray to actually try to picture the letters, to see the word in your eye, with your third eye, as they say, to see the word there, and then let the words pop up in front of you, and then you pronounce them as they come. It takes a lot of practice to do so, a lot of practice. But when you do that, prayer for you would never be the same. You would like to pray fast, uh, slower, not faster. People today want to do fast, fast, fast. People think it is a, a badge of honor if I pray fast. But rather you should pray slow. You should communicate, knowing your place. Knowing that Kadosh Baruch Hu is listening to you, understanding that. There's a definition of a man, of a human. I think we should try to focus a little bit on our tefillot. Try to take your time. You start praying, take your time. See how long does it take you to pray regular. No, no fancy things. And in order to develop, try to add every month another 30 seconds to your tefillah. No more. You pray for, let's say, three minutes, Try to pray for three and a half minutes. After a month or two, add another 30 minutes. And then you'll see that filah will be like an expression of feelings to you. An expression of your desire to communicate with God. And when you have this desire, it would now be a problem for you to do mitzvot or to prevent from doing averot. Because it's impossible. If a person loves his wife tremendously, and he can't wait to see her when he comes from, from work, as soon as he leaves the house, he's thinking about how he misses her and looking forward to the time that he'll come home and to see his wife. He, he is immersed with his desire to her. He loves her. She's a part of him. Therefore, for a person like this, to have a desire to another, towards another woman would be impossible. Impossible. Because I don't have any feeling for her. It's nothing. So therefore to prevent yourself from doing another eyes is very easy. It's not shayach. Therefore all day long you work towards that goal. And therefore if your wife asks you, can you do me a favor? Can you, on the way from home, can you do me a favor? Can you buy, I don't know, bread and milk? 
you won't say, wow, I want to see you so bad. No, I can't do that. So of course, it's not a problem. It's another act of love. And that is what we are commanded. If you cannot love God, you cannot love anyone but yourself. Have a great day.